Okay. All right. I want to welcome everybody today and for experimenting, but I think you're going to like these classes to go in depth on something. Um, I'm going to ask a few questions first. How many of you are happy with your progress? <laughs> and some are not, right? Why not, my mom? I, because my own lesson is, is more than like Okay. It's over there. Um, who else raised their hand that is not happy? Carol? Why? I have been so much fun. Janet, so what are you doing? I know. Everyone is looking to improve and have an easier way of learning. Yes, yes. Always. Did he say something? Yes. If, if she asks a question online and I like you to turn on your mic and shout out the answers, if, okay? Anybody online want to answer? Okay. So I'm going to ask this question Are you reading music? Or are you spelling it note by note? Or you have some in between or fourth hearing? I'm not sure. A three quarters reading, a push note fine, and then a quarter going into notes. Yeah. Three quarters reading, okay? We want to I'm go good. all the way. You're the same way. What about you, Ty? I'm a half. Okay, we gotta get you oh, it's too hard for Carol. I actually find my note. <laughs> I find my note and then I go up and then <laughs> well, that's wonderful. That's correct. Right, you know. okay. um, is everyone real secure in the names of the notes? No. <laughs> okay, if you're not, we just keep work. I was I thought I was so good. I had a book organized here. If you are not secure in your notes, mm -hmm. we have a new book out on writing the magic of writing and rhythm. And you will have pages to write your notes. Then we'll write intervals. Then we'll write chords, and then there's rhythm back in here. So if you need that, it's here. You can pick that up. Okay. Uh, how many of you want to be a, the thing I hear over and over? <laughs> Donna, I don't want to be a concert musician. <laughs> Does anybody in here want to be a concert musician? Now, Janice's hand go up. You want to be a concert musician? <laughs> Does my hand go up? No. So we got to train her. Okay. So I'm going to ask you this. Does anyone in here really want to be a public speaker? <laughs> no way. Nobody's got that goal. But do you still, did you still have to learn? Jen wants to be a public speaker. Yes. Jen Howard. Okay, Jen. But, that, but you got a basis of it. Did you have to learn English? Did you have to learn the grammar? Did you have to learn the words? Did you have to learn to spell? Could you be a public speaker? Yes. Do you wish to? No. But you had to learn the language in order to speak English, right? Okay, music is a language. Are you really clear on that? Really clear. And you speak it with your head. You shape the tongue to talk. In music, you shape the finger and hand to talk. Now, traditional method, we never ever have that. Does that make sense? Can you imagine? Year after year, I think we're just practicing reading notes. Okay. okay, so what we're going to do today 
We're going to take a beautiful song. And we're going to have to tell you a story, though, first. The other day I was talking to God. And I said to him, you know what, God? I am tired of practice, practice, practice. In all my 80-some years, all I heard was practice, practice, practice. I'm tired of it. I want to play. There's got to be a better way. Am I missing something? And I heard, yeah, you are. I said, what? So he had the feeling to sit down at the piano. Then the feeling came. Play very, very slow. So you have time to see everything. I sat down and I played 10 pages of a Beethoven sonata like that. So we're going to take this. This is the deep. We're still going too fast when we're learning a song. So we program the intention into our hands. We don't hear the heart of the song. What was happening when Carol uh, Lopez did that, she had asked me one time, she said, Donna, how do you know when a song has to get loud and soft? You have that question? How do you know when you're supposed to get loud and soft? Well, she was going very slow. I had her go super slow. She did it automatically. And she stopped going, heard it, Donna. I felt it. I felt 15 years of prior, 20, 18 years of prior lesson. She never felt it. All of a sudden, she could hear and feel when to slow down, when to get soft. And we're going to make the music beautiful on that song. Okay. So we're going to start with the song Tender. And I suppose most of you want to hear it first. Yes. Is it by right? Yes, and I go to the piano. Okay. Do I need my phone with it? No. Okay. I just want to play the first two pages, right? And it's good. But I am not going to play it back. Four kinds of chords. 
Solid. A broken. Split. Now the word split would mean between two hands. It split a couple of notes here, a couple of notes here, and abbreviated for it. Abbreviated or a partial. All the notes are not there. Then we have to know what here is and what it could be. But do you look at this measure? Is there a complete word in either hand? No. What key are you in? G. What are the notes that you have? You have a G, a D, and a G, and a D. What do you think it could be? It's logical to be a G chord because we are in the key of G. Now, the second measure is going to be interesting. What are the notes in the second measure? What's the left hand? A curve. What else? What does the right hand have? A D and an F sharp, right? Those are our notes. My first reaction was that is a D chord. Then I went, okay, how can I check what other chord in the key of G has those two notes? There's one more chord in the key of G that has those two notes. D. Or what other one? Look at your chords. B, B minor. B. B. F sharp, right? So do you know how to check if that is a D dog chord or a B boy minor chord? Do you know how to check that? You don't. Okay. Other what? Other You can. What you do? We're gonna go to the piano. We're gonna go to It's okay. You can go to the piano. I'm going to go to the piano. I am going to play solid chords in my G. The first can I do solid. And I'm going to play a uh, D dog first and third. And we're going to hear what it sounds like. Okay. Then I'll play the first line solid and not chord. Then for that second measure, I'm going to play D e minor. And we're going to see which one sounds better. So here are the G chord. <laughs> star map for your uh, you don't know and if you don't know how to spell your words forget it so donna i just want to bring up to your attention so that camera is for you to put your paper if you want to show uh, no where the book is at thank you so if you want to show 
everybody, then you just, yes. What happens if you like the D chord more? What do you do with? What happens if you like the D chord more than the, the D chord D? Okay. That, that's good. You're the composer. Uh, yeah. If you like the D chord better, fine. But I first tell you the truth that first I put in the D chord. Then I went away. Is she doing that or could we go to a B minor? Now go to the third line. Third line, second measure. That chord, you have an F sharp, B, F sharp in your left hand, but you do have a B chord in your right hand. So that definitely is a B minor chord. So following that, I went, okay, <laughs> I think it's a B minor in the first line, second measure. Measure. Am I going too fast? Now, why is this important? I could just I can just play the note style. Understand me. And when you take a song to the star, you're gonna slide over here and go the star for just a second. When you take a song to the sky, she, uh, yellow to orange is absolutely true. So is yellow to red, but that's common. Yellow to orange, you move one note. It is beautiful. So as I took the song to the star, I went, ah, I think she's going this way. Then she's blue, and then she's red. And that is the exact same chord progression I used when I wrote hard because I love it. Yellow to orange to blue to red. So that's why I made that for you. Third measure. You have a C and an E and an E. So what do you think that is? Most possibly a what? C chord, okay. Fourth measure, the left hand has a fifth in that tells you, right? How many of you look for fifths right away? Why hand? I got your name right. Yes. This <laughs> is the easiest way to analyze. The easiest way to analyze is look for fifths. Do you do that, Yenho? Write that down. Okay. Look for the fifth. I think we do that. Okay. Holly, I think you're more and more used to that, right? Look for the fifth syllable. I do it because that's where my hand is. Yeah. yeah. But it tells you the name of the chord. When you see a fifth syllable, what note tells you the name of the chord? Bottom. Bottom. I see a fifth bottom. Okay. I'm going to jump around here, folks. The third line, first measure. I'll give you a chance to finish writing. Third line, first measure, left hand. First two notes, do you see a fifth? This is the G chord. <laughs> Second measure, in the left hand, is there a fifth? No, we will have to spell. Third measure. Third line, left hand, is there a fifth? What's the bottom note? E, so it's some kind of E chord. Fourth measure, third line. Is there a fifth? No. So we got a spell. Is this making sense? Okay. So we've got the first line. Now let's go to the second line. Second line is basically a repeat of the first line. Do you see that? Except measure four. Now, that, well, you're wondering what that G is doing there, right? In, in measure 
Am I, if I'm going too fast, just raise your hand. People online, if you need me to go slower, let Janice know and I will slow down. Okay. Second line, fourth measure, right hand. Do you see the G? I want you to hear the sound. I'm going to go to the piano and play that real quick. Oh, now you need to sit down. You need to sit down. Your head is in the camera. <laughs> Do you hear a slight bit of tension? Does it sound like one of the notes doesn't belong in the board? Listen to the next note. Uh, did you, what did you hear? Did you hear resolution? Okay, listen to the sound. You're going to write on that chord a sus, S U S, four. Okay, um, I think I forgot to give you keyboards. Everybody here, grab a keyboard, some color, whatever you want, and I'll need one to get the last one over. And over here, grab a keyboard. Now, what I want you to do is on your keyboard, play a D dog root chord. D F sharp A. Now, A is the fifth from D, is that correct? What is G to D? How far is G? From D. Six. Oh, four, four. four. Sorry. Four. There is a beautiful, beautiful chord called the sus four chord. You play the fourth note, it has to resolve to the third. What is the third note in the chord? Okay. Is it the next note here? F sharp? Mm -hmm. So when I see it now, what does that do for my point? When I see a sus four, I get excited mm -hmm. because I know this neat sound is coming, and I love when it resolves. So when I hear a sus, see a sus four, I play the sus four a little louder because I want. To. Okay, I'll play it for you on the piano so you can hear what I'm talking about. I'll play. The third measure and the fourth measure. To hear that nice sound. Mm -hmm. Now I didn't clunk on that. I didn't hit that F sharp loud. I sort of sank into it. Hear that sound? And when you play like that, it opens your heart. And when people hear you play like that, they go, could you play again? <laughs> they don't go, oh, that was nice. What's for dinner? <laughs> when, when people say that, that's when there was no heart. So you're going to write D, S U S, four slash seven. I purposely did not put that in. Which D one are we talking about? I have lost, sorry. Hey, you can, just can take a look right here. Well, you can go ahead and point. Right here. Second line. Second line. D S U S four. Why is that sus four? Which one? The bottom note? Bottom no, the G. The, the G. The G. Where is it? The G. Okay. This G, so this, Wait, this is the fourth the note. No, that's the fifth interval. Okay. What's right. the fourth? Oh, down so there. The chord is the G. Right, right, right. G okay. is the fourth note so from the G. Oh, not, okay. You won't see a fourth yeah. interval. Okay. Right, so that's, that's what I saw. Yeah, you're not going to see a fourth interval okay. on the piano here. Okay. Right, okay. But chord-wise, 
I see. G is the fourth note from D dog. I see. Okay. Does okay. that make sense? Now it does. Okay. Thank you. So when you play that, listen for that sound. You're gonna enjoy it. And you know what? Hang on a second. Hey guys online, do you know what she's talking about? Yes? Okay, Donna, can you point to it again, please? Right here. And I was going to write a little one. Can you ask me? Oops, I'm sorry. Now, why is that so important? You know, when you put, don't you put a dash of this and a dash of that? <laughs> Donna, can you re-explain that again? So, Yiping, did you get that or no? Online. No, can you repeat that again? Okay, on the music, uh, can you pull out your, on your, just, can somebody give her a keyboard? Okay. So, okay, you can pass, excuse me. Okay, on the keyboard, on the keyboard, if you take a D and an A, and a B, G. Hang on, oh, it's the mirror version. Yes, hang on a second. So they should be able to see it properly. So hang on a second, please. Okay. Do you guys know where is it on the music? Do you guys know where is it? Okay. Donna, can you push it over a little bit? I'm sorry, that way. That way. There we go. Okay, I can see. Perfect. Second line, last minute. And it results to the extra. You hear the sounds when you play it, and many times we play it too fast. So the beauty is gone. Right, does that make sense? Can everybody online see it now, Jana? Do you guys understand now online? Yes. So wave at yes. me. Why that is D7? Okay, Donna, because you wrote a D7 on your music. Right. But, so, okay, I'm going to go to the board of what I would like. Hang on. Hang on a second. Let me clear that. The C is a seven of the D tone, isn't it? Count from D to C on your keyboard is the C is the seventh of the chord D. So that's why she wrote down D7. The G is the fourth tone from D dog. Do you understand that now, Yiping? Can you point to that measure again? Okay, the C, if you count on your piano, Donna, can you flip your piano over? Okay. If you count from D to C, is seven toned. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, correct? Now from D to G is the fourth tone. So a fourth will always resolve to the third. Always put that down. The fourth. Does that, is that helpful now? Okay. If you guys online do not understand, do wave at me, all right? Or send me a message on text. A sus four always has to be resolved to the third. Otherwise, it's not a sus four. Does it have to be in the same measure? No, it could be in the next. But it must resolve to the third. Because it's tension, and tension has to be resolved. Okay, um, Jen, what is your question? Um, did you say that it may not resolve in the same measure? That's it might. That's that okay. Be in the next measure. Okay. Oh, it would be in the next measure, right? Yes. In okay. The next measure or the next one. Okay. Thank you. Okay, great. Any more question online? Okay, good. Uh, okay, Sydney, ask your question. Wait, what is the sus part for? I know what the four, because it's like 
for from the key so can what does means sound? suspended so okay. it has a clashing sound donna you want to go to the piano and do the sus again okay sorry i'm directing mm -hmm. the boss here it sounds clashy see how she resolved to the third tone okay does that help okay any more question okay cool that's right the third tone is an f sharp that's what she just want to confirm yes okay now i would like to go back to the first line On the first line, look at the left hand, you've got your people. What pattern do you see in the left hand? Sorry, this is my one You got a G. I know. Second measure is a F sharp. Third measure is an E. Fourth measure is a what's the pattern? Scale. Is that important? Critical. <laughs> you see that, you know? Yes. <coughs> you, see that? No. you see that? No, not yet. Show her the skip. Or the first line. Okay. G. Okay, Donna, you want to point to it on the Again, screen? G. F sharp. Okay. And a D dog. That is the scale. Okay. Now, in the second line, it G. doesn't do exactly. It does G and F sharp. Then it jumps to C. Now we're going to go to the left hand, third line. Donna, take a look at this so that way you can see yeah, how. Thank you. Okay. Okay, you've got a G. I'm taking just the first note in the left hand of every measure, just the first note, the whole note. You've got a G. What's the next note? Next measure. F sharp. Next measure. E, next measure. What did you notice? Is it the same as the first line? Yes. Yes. Okay. So on your keyboard, and those of you online on the piano, third line, left hand. Play a G5H. Uh, care. <laughs> Randy, I think you want to turn your keyboard up the other way. No one are that me from a ring. Okay. Piano 101. <laughs> okay. All right. So what makes the 5H easy? When you see a 5H, you know, what does your hand do? Uh, I reach for the uh, after and then critical. Critical. Did you guys get that online? When you see a 5-8, your hand should do this automatically without thinking. Automatically, what finger is going to fall on? You can reach G and G. Automatically, what finger is going to fall on B? I mean, on go. Second finger. Automatically. Your other left hand, Carol. Oh. Okay. So you reach G automatically here. D G to G. G to G. Your second finger will automatically fall on dog. That is critical handshake. Now, we're going to go to the second measure in the third line. What note is the same? The D. Is your second finger already on the dog? Yes. yes. Yeah. So where is there an octave? The lowest note is F sharp. So do you know what that top note is? Okay, it's a line to a space. It's got to be an octave, F sharp. So you keep your second finger on dog. You take the octave, pinky and thumb, and you go to F sharp. That's all. Now, what is the shape that you are playing? You're going to go to F sharp. You're going to go from here to F sharp. And F sharp. Yeah. 
Okay, what is that handshake? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What? Okay, I'm sure. Go off to G5, G5, stretch. Freeze the hand. Go to enter. Go to enter. This doesn't move. What's the hot shape, Holly? 5 7. Nope. 5 8. Nope, it's not a 5 8. It's not a 5 7. 6. What? I heard somebody say it. 6. What? 6 8. That is critical to know. Am I making sense? What? It's going to tell your hand how to move. You're speaking a language. You've got to. This needs training, just like our tongue needed training. If I'm going to learn a foreign language, am I going to learn to speak Chinese? No. no. <laughs> I have to change my shape of my tongue. I've got to go through all kinds of stuff to be able to speak that language, correct? It's the shape of the tongue. It's the shape of the hand. So you're going from a 5-8 to a 6-8. Okay, I'm going to back up one. We're going to go to the third line. First measure, okay? Forget the second finger. Play the octave G. Just the octave. All right, Janet, good. Second measure. Pick up your hand and go to octave F sharp. Down a half step. You have to know it's a half step. Third measure. Freeze your hand, go to octave E, elephant. Uh, elephant, you got down to elephant. E, Carol, down here. E. You guys can e. take a look on this. Um, I, you can also I see it there. The, right. And go down one more and you're at octave D, dog. Does that make sense? Do that again. Octave G, F sharp. E elephant and D dog. So did your octave change at all? No. Now look what I wrote. First measure was five eight. Second measure was third measure was fourth measure was six eight. Now, when you go from a 5-8 to a 6-8, often the middle note ain't changing. So go back to G5-8. So octave G, Carol. G, find the G. Second finger has to fall on dog automatically. Now, keep the second finger on dog. Move the octave to F sharp. Does a six eight feel differently? Log that in. Are you used to six eights? No. 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 Okay, I thought so. You're used to much. No. <laughs> okay, a five eight. Let's see if they can see my hand. A five eight is natural here. A six eight is a stretch. Okay, I'm gonna have you do one more thing. Pinky on C cat, just the pinky. Okay, second finger on G George. Second finger, girl. Now feel that. Now keep the pinky on cat. Second finger stretches to an A. That's a six. Oh, light bulb. Got it? Couple light bulbs. Does that make sense? Yes. You gotta feel that, you gotta know that because that's how you're going to talk it. Okay, now go back to G five eight. The minute you say five eight, your hand goes boom. Now keep the second finger on dog, take the octave to F sharp. Now the next chord is E elephant. Five, eight, slide down. Five, second finger falls right where it's supposed to. And the next chord is D dog, six, eight, don't move the second finger. Am I going too fast for you there, Sharon? 
uh, I talked about some uh, third measure. Okay. So I open the where's the second finger should be. Well, when you do a five eight, your second finger is right there. Right here. Okay. Okay. Uh -huh. When you go to a six eight, don't move that second finger. Go okay. down one to the dog. Online, are you guys okay? Okay. okay. Jen, you okay? Now, when okay. you take it this carefully, don't you have it memorized? Mm -hmm. Then you go to the piano and you play. Like, oh, that's neat. And you know what? Those of you that, uh, when you play this and you start playing slower, you are more successful. It pulls you to the piano. Cheer that, you know, my <laughs> Carol and Mandy, it starts pulling you to the piano because you have this beautiful sound and you're successful. You're creating beauty. What? Yeah, what makes a, a composer to change from five to six? Sound. Sound, just the sound. Sound. She wants to carry out the same pattern she did in the first line. And, what, okay, the left hand, when you go a scale like that, that's like a walking bass. Just walk, and that's such a neat sound. So when I see it, I go, oh, that's going to sound good. And I like that. Okay, let's go to the fourth line. Measures one and two. Do you see a five eight going to a six eight? Same thing. And then in measure three, back to a five eight. And then you freeze your hand. You literally freeze your hand and you go up to a D dog by. Eight. Why is it so important to say five, eight, six, eight? Can't you just play it and not say it? No. Why is that so important? To be more conscious. Shapes your hand. Muscle memory. <laughs> Muscle memory. Shapes your hand. If I say a root, play a root. The minute I say root, what did your hands do instantly? without thinking. Did you have to think? No. No. I didn't know roots when I went into college. Can you believe that? Looking at me like, what? No, I had to figure out the root chords all by myself. I sat at the piano counting half steps. Oh, that's a root chord. Why didn't they tell me that? <laughs> so when you say, uh, how you want your hand to shape for everything you're playing is as fast as it shapes for a root. If not, you're going to hunt for notes. Okay, so that makes sense. So if I say G58, all I have to look for is G. Do I have to know there's a D and a G in there yet? No. If I say F sharp, six, eight, I go for the F sharp and I shape the six. I don't have to know it's a D. It's a six. That is much more critical. It's just getting through. If you're not thinking like that, it's harder. So much harder. And then it's practice, 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 which is what I'm trying to get away from. I want to play. All right. Is that making sense? <laughs> now, when you see a six, Eight. You have to spell. Why? There's no fifth. Does that make sense? So if I'm going to the second line, I'm sorry, third line, second measure. So I'm not taking to your paper a little bit. But I'm watching there. Okay. <laughs> We need to send a monitor right there and next time another one. Right? Okay. Okay. When I see a six eight, <clears throat> there's no fifth. I have to spell. 
So I go left hand F sharp and D and an F sharp. Same thing I had over here before. I see the right hand F sharp. G doesn't belong. B, O, B, D, F sharp. You will yell B minor. So how do I write it? B minor uh, over F sharp. Six, eight. Do you know why we write it like that? Over something. What does that mean? First note, it's going to be at the bottom note is F sharp. That's what that means. When it's over something, the bottom note, that tells us what the bottom note is. So B minor over F sharp. I know F sharp is by bottom note. Carol, does that make sense? Okay. Any questions so far? Sharon, does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. All right. So what does that do for my playing? <clears throat> I learn it. I am seriously 500% faster. I understand it. My hand shaking is right there. I am successful easily. I am playing. Quotation marks, not practice, practice, practice. That is actually, I think, a negative word that we should be playing piano. So, you know, how many times have we parents have said to us, go practice? Did they ever tell us to go play the piano? Mm -hmm. Look at the guy. You tell your mom that Donna said she now has to ask you to play the piano, not practice. Okay. <laughs> okay. Does that make sense? That's why God and I had that conversation. Seriously, I'm tired of the word practice. There's God to do a better way. So we go deep and we go slow. We understand. So let's say the first time I met me, hi, I'm Donna. Ah, you know, Lisa. And you are Lisa, right? Okay. Glad to meet you. Am I going to feel comfortable inviting her to go on a trip with me? Uh, no, no, because I don't know her. If you don't, Anna, I want to sit down and talk with her. I want to get to know her. Take the time to get to know her. You have to take the time to get to know the song. Now, what does this do for your other songs? You're going to see the same patterns over and over and you will recognize and go, oh, I know how to do that. Oh, just like a root chord. You don't have to think, it's there. Does that make sense? Uh, Any comments? Sorry, I have a So the third line, the first measure and the second measure, the one you just mentioned, like the, one, the second measure you mentioned was E over F sharp, same thing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but why the first line you only say G by A? Why you don't say B over G by because A? Because I named the chord G. It's a good question. Why in the first measure don't I say G over G? Is that by me saying G, it's the first note? No, I'm saying uh, why the first uh, measure doesn't identify a uh, Are you talking G, third line? Yeah. This yeah. one. Why? Why? Why don't I think if I would say B over G by A? I don't need to. Why? That's because when I say G, that is the bottom. Good question. Does that make sense, Carol? Like okay. this one is F sharp. Yeah. Because the lowest note here yeah, it's G, yeah. is G. Yeah. So that's why it's G five eight. Yeah. This one is F sharp. The but lowest note. But it's not the F sharp chord. It's not an F-sharp chord. itself, this is, remember I told you before, this is the interval. The F-sharp 6-8 is the oh, interval. It's not a chord. It's not uh, a it chord. is a chord. But it's an interval to it's help. An interval. It's, it's a split chord. You have okay. two notes there and some more in the right hand. But we're reading it as an interval to help yeah. us shape our hands. Oh, okay. Shaping. Okay. Everything about a language is shaping the tongue. Everything about talking a language is shaping the tongue. Everything about piano is shaping the tongue, shaping the hand. 
by saying root, it's right there. If I say G7, it's right there. If I say first inversion, it's right there. Whatever the shape is by hand will just go. That. Okay, are you guys okay online? Okay, um, yep. So remember that everything about piano playing is hand shape. You have to be able to read it and think it to give the command to your hand. Okay, I'm going to do something. I'm going to write a sentence on the board. There was on the interstate today. Can you read that for me, please, Holly? I don't think I know what that second word is. <laughs> I'm recursive. <laughs> oh, can you read cursive? Yes. yes. I just I don't think I've ever seen that word before. Okay. Did that word stop everybody in their tracks? <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. Well, that's what happens in music. If you don't know what you're playing, it stops you. That word is a French word in the English. It is an English word. It is Volaversamon. It means chaos. A big, long word for such a... That's what it means. There was chaos on the interstate thing. There was Volaversamon on the interstate. None of you could read this, could you? No, you stopped. Donna likes to pick on me, by the way. <laughs> Janice likes to pick on me a lot. Yeah. I learned it from her. You understand what I'm, what I'm driving at? Just like this stops you hit dead in your tracks. And then you would go, you couldn't, if you're reading a book, you couldn't go on. You go, what, what is that? Well, where I gotta look at it. You're playing piano, you're stuck. Well, it takes so long to hurt. Maybe I'm not so good at piano. Maybe I should quit. Well, I don't know if I have the time. I don't feel like that. You know those negative statements? Right? Right. Okay. No. You didn't learn to talk. You didn't take the time and have fun. You're creating beautiful sounds here. And it's fun. Oh, that's what this is. Oh, that's me. Oh, look how, oh, he did it here again. Wow. It's fun. When you see it repeated, does that make sense? Is this helping? Randy? No. And the other day when you played slow, oh yeah, <laughs> tell them what happened when you played slow. Well, I was, I was asking Donnie, no, no, when I was practicing, it just felt so choppy and clanging, you know. So she said, "Slow down," and it just sounded so much better. And you played successful. Yeah, I played it successful. <laughs> Way smooth. And I, I told her, I said, you can take this speed, but no faster. Same thing happened when you try. Okay. So then you have to, if you take it that slow in the beginning, you have time to see everything and to think. Oh, that's, well, that's a cheap one. Yeah, I remember. And you don't lose the rhythm. You have time and you feel good about it. That's how I could play 10 pages of the Beethoven Sonata like this. And I didn't have to practice, oh, practice, practice. Okay. Any question, you know, or statement? Oh, statement is I, um, I think I'm always anxious to, to learn the song and play the song to an end. So I never took the time to analyze. And so you'll keep the key point is don't you're, rush. You're anxious, the quotation marks, we're anxious to play. No. So you want to have the cake before you bake it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> that is the key. But you missed the joy. Seriously, you missed the joy of getting acquainted with that song. And what you are pointing out is like finding out what the structure is. The structure, the structure, the sound. How did he get that sound? Now, people say, oh, I'd like to learn to improvise, but they never study music. So we have not, they don't have the vocabulary. All you got to do, there's nothing. They just have notes. What can you do? Yeah. Um, when Julie was here, is Julie online? 
Not today. Okay. She thought, well, I thought we're supposed to play our songs fast. And I go, are we creating beauty or speed? And as far as I'm concerned, there's enough speed in the world today. How many people miss beauty? I need to tell you a real short story. Uh, years ago, I was teaching in Five Points, Denver. I took a bunch of uh, inner city kids from George Hamilton and Jefferson High School, uh, Junior High, who were having problems in school. And I took them on a workshop. They loved, we did a music workshop and learning. They loved it. So then I was asked to come once a week, drove down to Five Points to a um, community center. And I worked with these kids and most of them boys. And they still, I couldn't always get them to do their homework yet, but we were getting there. And I had little projects, little things, activities planned for them. One day I went shopping and you know, these beautiful pictures you can get that has some felt on there and you can color in there. I bought, I think I had five and there were about 10 kids and I bought the colors. So I took the pictures out of the bag and I said, today we're going to, and the boys, now these are boys, junior high boys stood up and go, we get to color? <laughs> I almost cried. I go, how have we cheated those kids? And I said, yeah, but these are the only colors I can find. Oh, that's okay, that's okay, we'll share. Mm -hmm. The whole hour, <laughs> those boys <clears throat> colored and loved every minute of it. <laughs> we took color away from them. We, you can't have beauty. Mm -hmm. I'll never, ever forget them. We get to color this tremendous awe in their voice. Mm -hmm. So we're here to create beauty. There's enough speed. Eventually, if you want to play fast, the better you know the song, the faster you can go. Right? And if you don't know the song, you try to go fast, you're going to hit every roadblock there is. Okay, is that making sense? Okay, I want to <clears throat> cover one more thing here today. And that's going to be on measure nine, third line, first measure. Now, level three students, I was at the computer this morning at five o'clock working on the level three interval uh, uh, book. And it's almost, it should be at the printer this week. In that book, you have examples of non core. So what do you think a non chord tone is? Doesn't need to show up. Well, how would you define a non chord tone? Lisa, any idea? Oh, passing by tone? Huh? Not a passing by tone. This passing tone is one of them. There's nine of them actually. Fancy. It's a note that's not in the book. Fancy. Can you rewrite it again? Okay, I'll write it in a darker color. Now you should see that, right? Okay. 90 to 95% of the notes, you may want to write this down. 90 to 95 percent of the notes in the right hand must belong to the chord of the left hand. Let's do that again. 90 to 95% of the notes 
Can you guys see it online? Okay. In the right hand token must belong to the core of the left hand. Did you know that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If the five, the ten to five percent of the notes that do not belong in the board are called non board tones. Donna, is this in the song in general or a measure? In general and measures. What if you have a song that's rich in scales? That's fine. Then whatever the chord is in the left hand, the notes in the right hand got to fit, except five to ten percent. Does that make sense? Okay. Did you know that if we do not have these, we could not have music? You know that, right? Okay, take the song Silent Night. I'll write it out here. One, oh, is that too high, Janice? No, nope, you're fine. Can you erase the music notes and ear training section yeah, for me, please? Right here. Okay. Can you guys see online? Okay, here's silent night. Sequence. Silent. Okay. We're in a C chord. Which note does not belong in a C chord? The A. Could we have the song Silent Night without that A? This is making sense, Carol. Is everybody with me so far on this? Okay. You guys okay online? Yeah? It's important to understand the notes that don't belong in the chord. Now, in the level three book, we're going to have pictures and explanation of every one. Now, just finishing that this morning at five o'clock. <clears throat> okay. If you look at this song, let's look at measure third line. First measure. The chord is G by the eight. What's the first note in the right hand? Does an F sharp belong in a G chord? No. No. So what is it? Is it a passing note? No. It's on a strong beat. I'm going to give you a fancy word here, but Cherney, Janice, help me out. Cherney, how oh. three? One of the Cherneys. What? What are you thinking? Uh, a pleasure to us. Um, forty-nine. No, it's another one. Oh, uh, seventy-two. Another one. Go into the twenties. Seventy-three. In the twenties. In the. I'll have <laughs> the twenties. Nobody have a Cherney. Nobody has a Cherney. You're very advanced, Janice. Please. <laughs> Here, I'll take that. Okay, thank you. I got it. Okay. So, the first thing you need to do is ask that one to win the song if it's changed to be go in and look for it all the action. Ah, 36. There we go. 36. So that way you swap it on the song. Because you will go over the class. So, I'm going to. So I'm going to erase this and write the fancy word here. Why they gave it this word, I don't know, but that's what it's called in music. A B P O G I A T U R A Apagiatura. Ooh, Apagia. Like you're apologizing that you don't have a chord tone on a strong beat. 
Oh, I'm sorry, but I didn't put a quarto. Yeah, I'm putting that quarto. <laughs> Not in the 20s. What? <laughs> Not in the 20s. I was trying to okay. suck up to Holly. Okay. Apache to. Now, they are used a lot in music. It must come on a strong beat. Now, this appoggiatura, okay, circle that F sharp in measure nine. It belongs, circle it in measure 11. Circle it in measure 13. And circle it in measure 14. Nine. 11, 13, and 14. Those are all, that first note does not belong in any of those points. But it's beautiful. Can you do that again one more time, please? Measure nine, 11, 13, 13, and 14. You guys got that online? Yeah? Now, why is that important? Did you hear the sound of that? I'm going to go to the piano. So. The music is on there, Donna. Okay, thank you. How many times is that pattern repeated? Three strings. Yeah. Let Can you do that one more time, Donna? Mm -hmm. Going to play the third and fourth line. Mm -hmm. That flash is dubbing it. So many times, oh, instead of the sound, they didn't understand why that note was there. You don't sit on it, you play it and move. understand English, you can write a book if you wanted to. When you understand music, you can write a song. What then? Someday you may want to just pull around and say, wow, listen to this. I wonder what I could do with that. You take some chords and you just start playing. How do you think the composer wrote the music? They knew the language. They took some chords and started playing. Oh, I like that. No, I think I'll change it. Oh, that sounds good. They knew the language. Remember the way music was taught is very different than Beethoven, Mozart, those guys had than what we have today. It changed in the 1900s. Are you aware of that? Two composers, Stravinsky and Schoenberg, thought that all the music had been written that could be written. I mean, what a, it's like saying, oh, we can't have any new books because all the books have been written that could be written. And you look at the person and say, what? So they tried to, they created a whole new style of music. Nobody liked it. In fact, in those days, they carried potatoes and tomatoes in their pockets when they went to concerts. And if they didn't like that, they would throw a tomato on stage and leave. And when that music, the colleges got on board and we lost the art and the science of learning music like the composers did. 
there were so many composers. They're just like, today we have so many authors. There were so many composers before the 1900s. Just people knew the language. It's making sense. Okay, what are you getting from today? What is helping? And home. Um, trying to find the, the pattern of fold, find the, yeah, the find the pattern. pattern is helping. So if you know the pattern, oh, the brain loves patterns. And it will latch onto a pattern like this. Well, got it. Play. So if you see the pattern, what happens to the plant is right there. What about you, Carol? Yeah, so I think that's a good, uh, good practice to show us right. how to you feel like what? Yeah, I so said you, you tell us how to read the whole like a uh, whole line instead of just one line. Okay, my one. hearing and a mask doesn't work sometimes. So. No, I said uh, uh, you show us how to read the whole line instead of just one measure, one by one measure. Mm -hmm. that, um, you can tell the whole story instead of just one piece. So, no, no. That helps. Uh, if if you take one measure, one measure is like the dog. Plan. You've got to connect them. Yeah, I think that helps about um, Oh, yeah. Things. Okay, good, good, good. Anybody else want to share what is making a difference? Anna, have you ever analyzed this deeply before? Not by this Jenna, so it's just to get me to. Because I'm sitting here. So yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay, when you want to improvise, want to improvise, you got to have the vocabulary. And it's got to be down home. If I want to write a story right now, I can sit down and start writing. Because I have tools. And the same with music. What's happening for you, Kaibu? Is this making sense to you today? Yes, it is. How so? Yes, I should say it's making sense to me by... Oh God, I don't know how to put it. When you understand something better, it's easier to. When I understand something better, it's easier to like apply it to how I play. Yeah. And how I'm learning. And this is kind of easier to like think differently about how I'm playing and change. And are you still thinking a lot of notes? No, not really, actually. Uh, intervals. Okay. Intervals and chords. Okay. Randy, what's making sense to you? Just knowing how to analyze the music so thoroughly, I've, I've never done that. So, could we want to go? Because I sit down and I just start playing sometimes. Yeah, and then it does go. It doesn't this work. work. Oh, this is going to take forever. I'll never get this. Oh, I'll do it later. Let's go do something. Right? Okay. I know Donna. Donna. Yes. Oh, oh go ahead. That's uh, it. This is Jan. I just want to say, I think one of the things that I like best is your um, reference to this as in building a friendship. And that, you know, I too, like everyone else, I kind of want to get to where it sounds good. And yet, I mean, how beautiful it is when we meet someone new and we kind of connect and we start learning about one another. And that's really what this is. I mean, it's a glorious way to become friends with the music. So I thank you for that reference. I like that. Thank you, Jen. I appreciate that. Right, Lisa? <laughs> no, and that's what I was thinking about. If I'm going to have a relationship with this song, and that's what you're going to have. You're going to have a relationship with this song. Get to know the song. There's so many beautiful things in music. And it's fun, and you feel like playing. It's a magnet. It draws you to the piano. Anybody else online wants to make a comment? Thanks, Jen, so much. I like that. You're welcome. Could I make a comment? Yes. Again, I'm talking a lot about it. It's okay. Something clicked in me recently. Was that? Uh, Janice has always been pushing me to <laughs> practice the scale and chords. I was always impatient when it comes to like, oh, so why do I have to play those Are you impatient? I am very. <laughs> but now it clicked because when we are familiar with the key of the uh, of the sound, and then we know the chords, then.
then we overcome that fear. Because when I get a piece of music, the first thing I feel is actually fear. Yes. Yeah, yes. I feel intimidated. <laughs> so what Janet is pushing me is if you get to know the scale and the chords, we don't have mm -hmm. as much fear no. to understand it. And actually, when you go this deep, all the fear leaves because you know how you're going to move. Yeah. And if you move the wrong way, you just look at it and say, oh, what did you guys see? Oh, I missed that. Okay, got it. That's all. Thank you for bringing that up because it eliminates, it eliminates fear and it creates tremendous success. Now, another thing, when people ask us, do you play the piano? Most people will say, yeah, I sort of play at it. Right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When you do this, you go, yes, and I love it. <laughs> you're owning it, you're claiming it, you're not playing. Like, would you play us, and then Vince say, would you play us a song? Only, if it's in the green, and you've thoroughly analyzed it, and you can take it with you into the music. Otherwise, don't play. Because it's for yourself. They're not paying for your lessons. <laughs> okay. Any other comments? How is this making sense to you? Yeah. It's the, In which it, way, it, Um, It's, uh, I feel like play chords is so, so important now. Before, I'm like, uh, uh, I don't know why I have to <laughs> shave my hands. I, I just play note by note, and now, yeah. Note by note, that's spelling a book. Right. I think of it that way. Randy, has made a difference for you today? Oh, yeah. Okay. And Jean? Well, I, yeah, shaping the hands. Shaping the hands. That was so interesting yeah. how you can just remember when we went to the next measure, we knew where how you're gonna move? Yeah. I mean, okay, do you ever get in your car and drive somewhere without knowing where you're going? Sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right? I mean, the minute we get in the car, we got a map. And if we don't, here comes GPS. <laughs> right? But we sit down at the piano all the time to play without knowing where we're going. No sense. Takes too long. Mimi, does this make sense for you? Yeah. So to go off of that like book analogy, um, like in English classes, we've been, you know, reading literature and then kind of analyzing the like the passages. Yeah. And then like with the authors, we would see like why are they choosing these certain diction words and like why are they repeating it throughout the passage? And I think um today was similar to that, where we see like patterns and then it's kind of understanding the composer more. Same thing. It's the same thing. And then I don't if you have the third uh, page two. I want to cover a couple of things here. More things. You just don't write you know, sorry. Where do I just, just tell me? Janice is the only time you can tell where to go. <laughs> right? Right. Okay, I need this one right now. I'm gonna go to page, whoops. This is page one first. On page one, you see where it says songs in the upper right hand corner. Songs are usually written in an A, B, A style. Do you see that? Do you know what that means? No, it's the theme, the idea. Okay, the first two lines of this song are introduction. Do you know that? Mm -hmm. And you may want to write introduction right by the beginning of the first line. How do I know it's the introduction? When you look at measure 9, 10, and 11, Da, 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 da. That's the melody. So the song begins in measure nine. 
Now, I'm going to give you another fancy word, and you want to write it on your music. It's capital M-O-T as in Tom, I as in India, F as in Frank. Motif. Motif is a musical idea. Da, da, da. Can't you still hear that? Da, da, when you, Silent Night. Da, 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 da. That's the motif. It's a musical idea. So measure 9, 10, 11, 13, 14. They all have the motif. On page 2. Sorry, you have to. Here. You have to put it up this way. Okay? On page 2. Measure, what is it, 17, 18, 19, motif. Same idea, you see that? Okay, then it's coming to an end at the end of the second line. Starting in the third line, do you see a different pattern in the right hand? Yep, intervals. What's the top note? B, right? So you're going to play a B, a second, a third, a fourth, a fifth, a fourth, a third, a fifth. Would you go that fast? Kylie, were you able to go that fast with me up here? Could you read second, third, fourth, fifth, fourth? Third, fifth. Do you see what I'm talking about, Randy? Randy, do you see that? From here to here is the second. Third, fourth, fifth. Is everybody, are you following there? Can you go back to the, the thing so that I can sort out this part for the online? Okay. Okay, online, can you guys, do you guys understand that? Do you guys, can you guys see that again? Donna, can you do it one more time? Okay, from the, I'm going to go by the letters. From the first letter, B to the A is the second, right? Mm -hmm. Back to the B to the G is the third. Can you move? No, the other way. There you go. Back to the B to the F sharp is the fourth. Back to the B to the E is the fifth. Back to the B to the F sharp is the fourth. Back to the B to the G is the third. Back to the B to the G is the fifth and a fifth. Now you should be able to go second, third, fourth, fifth, some fourth, third, fifth. One more time. <clears throat> okay. Slow fast. Slow. Move the, uh, it closer to the computer. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Okay. Here we go. All right. So right here's the second. Up to the B a third. Up to the B a fourth. Up to the B a fifth. B a fourth. B a third. B a fifth and a fifth. Now, why? Because there's a lot of notes there. Your brain's going to think, oh, this is hard. There's a lot of notes. Do you so guys I'm... get it online? Okay. Cool. She was doing the top. She in... was doing. No, not this one. This one. Nice. That's pattern. Mm -hmm. That one. Up of one. Are you with me so one, far? Up of yeah. third. Up of third. Now of fourth. Up of fourth. Now, let's look at the left one. hand. Notice what I wrote in there. E minor, five, eight. F I N root. F I N is an abbreviation for finish. The first three notes are E B E, right? Mm -hmm. Now, the third note is an E. Do you see space, space, space? That's a root. You see what I'm talking there, Randy? Mm -hmm. So on your keyboard, shape a G five eight. So your hand, when I say five eight, what does your hand do? You should do this like this right away. That is a five eight, guarantee. <laughs> okay. So play the G. Uh, pinky G. Are you on G, Randy? G don't think of G. Right. Play the G, the D, and the G. 
Now finish your G root chord, cross over second finger to the B and the thumb to the dog. G, five, eight, finish the root. That's an important name. You're going to see that a lot in music. That makes sense. Sharon, does that make sense? Uh, I thought this is G five eight. Why is G five eight? So we finish the finish the root. What do you need to G five eight. G. Okay. This finishes the word of the G. Go ahead. So if you know that, um, you will have eight. G. You will have eight. That's in G. Oh, that's in G. Do you guys do you guys know what she's talking about? She moved to hang on. She moved to line second line measure twenty four. Okay, she moved to show them on, on, on the piano there. No, 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 no. They they got lost on the music. Okay. Right. <laughs> that is an E. So you went to a G. Oh, my so but you <laughs> jump up to the measure before that on it's a G58, finish the root. Okay. Um E minor. My mistake, Randy. E minor five eight. Are you can control. Okay. Okay. Why is that important? Well, first of all, you already know a five eight, and you know a root four. Well, if I go E B E, I know E minor is G and a B, so I got a G and a B. I don't have to think the notes. I've got the word. My hand knows how to shape and how to move. So you've got the by they shape today and you've got finish the root. Okay. How do you finish the root again? Right. So you right. play the five eight, play the elephant. Five, eight, five, eight. Now cross and over G and cross over to one. Second finger cross over to G and thumb. Thumb goes to B. You gotta know your root chord. If you don't know your root chord. Back again, right? This is B. What? And your second finger is on G, the A is then B. your thumb tucks under, yeah. goes to E, and then your fourth finger will be right there to play the B. Oh, got that? <laughs> okay, one more Okay, time. so Stop what I'd like you to do is play, study, get acquainted yeah, right here now. Mm -hmm. Remember the, the red G. section of a song and is acquaintance. How do you get acquainted? By like getting deep into the song, thumb. blocking the to E. And if I there's something you don't right understand in the song, mm -hmm. circle to say, what is this? Mm -hmm. Got it. Thank you. Uh -huh. And then we can wow. explain that to you. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Holly, what are you going to leave with today the most? Um, well, I am heading on a trip for a month where I do will not have actually She's going to piano, Peru two months. But um, I was going to ask you if I could borrow one of these yeah. <laughs> to take with me because I want to continue playing tenderly and I do not have a piano. So I really like how I feel like I'm at the piano when I'm with this. I didn't have to be at an actual piano. I can... I can appreciate the analysis more. I can still get the feel of my handshake with this. Yeah, and that's, that's actually just, key that's a great tool. Great. So, okay, you can and bright pink, okay, too? I may get a different color. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sharon, how about you? I think I'm going to go back to uh, understand more of the star uh, for each uh, uh, key. Uh, so get from the So yes, and blocking deeply. Yeah. Okay, you know, you we move through some blocks. Yes. Which yes. one? Also. Um, yes. Overcome the uh, anxiety. Yeah. yeah. You're anxious because you don't know what you're playing. But if you really know what you're playing, it's a deep key. What about you, Carol? 
Uh, I think I'm, I might need to trim my habit to do the whole line to just one measure by measure. I know, Janice told us to don't like just really need one measure, but I still it's just no. there I have it, so I have to trim it. Yeah, maybe read the whole piece of the music. Okay, and Lisa, how about you? Uh, today I learned a few steps for kids who did not work out and what they need and why people put them in the street on and how to play them. I also learned more about uh, the position Positioning the hands, right? Makes it easier. And Amy? Um, I think that is the best way to because it will be more conscious of the like, having something and the boards that you're shaking. Because I think, you know, for any person who doesn't play music, it's like speed is like what they want to hear. Speed, yeah. yeah. But you know something? When somebody plays with a lot of speed all the time, what do people usually say? Oh, that's nice. You're very good, right? They asked to do it again. No, No, but if someone takes a song and plays it beautifully, what do people say? Could you play that on the When you play it a second time, you go, do you mind playing it on the end? <laughs> they never do that for speed. Isn't that interesting? They only do it when there's tremendous beauty. Um, the one time I had a class of adults, about 15 adults in a room, and I wanted them to get quiet and they were, don't, don't, don't. And I thought, oh, I know what to do. I sat down and played Beethoven's Light Sonata very slow, one after another. Next thing I know, the room is quiet. I got down, they go, could you play the game? <laughs> Okay, Randy, what about you? What did you learn? So I, the importance of learning my chords and scales. <laughs> so I'll, and then just how to analyze the music. So Look at it, just right? Yeah, it, analyze it instead of just sitting down mm -hmm. and get tense and right. Right. Is it in, is analysis interesting? Very analysis, very interesting. Hannah, how about you? Um, kind of what she was saying about playing fast because people are like very impressed by fast playing if they don't really know music, but it's actually more impressive if you're able to play it slow and you're playing beautifully. So, yeah. yeah, that really stops people in the tracks. Jean? So I practice some of the slow that you've taught me and went deeper in a new song and then played an old song the way that I was playing. And I did notice a difference. The new song that I got acquainted with and become friends with it, it came so easily and smoothly. And I knew exactly where I was going and the transitions were easy as opposed to something that I didn't learn that way. And it was choppy, and I just didn't know where to go, and stopped at each measure, and started being anxious. Interesting. <laughs> Man, you see the same thing. Yep. Hi, what about you? I was kind of like some people you're talking about, like even when they get it, because they try to do it fast, and that's what me in a lot of pieces of my music. I'll try to go fast, um, not really knowing that's this. I thought faster the more beautiful in my opinion, but no, the slower the more beautiful it is to listen to and honestly just to help you play as well. Yeah. And you feel good about your play. I do. Yeah. Carol, what about you? Um for me it's the importance of note scales and intervals. <laughs> it's the language. Yeah. Okay, anybody online might share? Jan? Can you guys hear Ms. Sacone? Yes. Yeah, now, I, sorry, I was muted. Um, really, the whole package today has been helpful. And uh, I, I always love it that I learn some little tidbit or more than one new 
every time, you know, there's a lesson, it's, uh, it's wonderful. And I, I think it's, thanks for reminding me about the scales. I know Janice has told me to do that too. And I forgot about it. Um, it does help with, uh, taking that fear factor out of there. So, but it's all been just excellent today, Donna. Thank you. So there's Yiping and Kelly. On. Yeah. Kelly, you want to share? Oh, there she got a dog. <laughs> um, I have a very spoiled dog. He gets nervous if he can't sit on my lap. I would say that one of the important things for me is... Uh, remembering the patterns because you know everybody knows a five eight you're like yay i can do a five eight but the six eight and also finishing the chord because you have to ask yourself what note is missing the other thing i would say is that in life as well as music, i mean and anything in your life for me the key is slow down slow down slow down because you want to just you know it's like this is really hard. I'm going to go through it fast. <laughs> yeah. And I, I think when, when I was learning music, because I'm a wind player, and when I, when I was a kid, you know, the whole, and, and we, were, we were talking about it at the ice rink the other day. When we, were, when we were kids coming up, when we were learning music, when we were learning skating, the whole vibe was punitive, you know? But I keep telling myself, you can't be perfect. Perfect is the enemy of good. Yep. Thank you, Kelly. So, you know, you don't need to be perfect. You need to be, you need to be happy. Because, you know, it's just, you got to slow down. Yep, slow down. And I, I am more guilty than anybody I know. So, okay, play it fast. No, don't do that. Yeah. And then and, we're, we're yeah, on 30, 30 on a metronome. Uh, go ahead. And then we have keeping. Okay, Yiping. Hi, Donna. Thank you for the teaching today. I think they're really helpful. And what I learned is when you play the music, first you need to know the entire picture, where you have to go, your hand. And then I think the other thing is in your question, you told us, um, how do you to connect your music to your heart? I think that is what I learned today because uh, before I just want to play, but I did not really listen my heart. So from now on, when I play, I will let my heart to lead my hand and brain instead of my brain and hand to lead my heart. Thank you. Good point. Good point. Good point. Thank you. And Clive? Clive left because uh, he can't hear us. So he's going to do the recording. So I will need to buy a big boom bike. So Excuse me. Uh, the next, <laughs> or, no, instead of doing two classes in a row, Dennis had a good idea. Sure. Well, they got to go home I'm, and digest I'm, the I'm, one. So next week, if we um, for Janice, because she has to drive down and get set up, uh, do we, can, can we start at 10? So instead of the 27, yeah. we move it to next week. Oh, well, she's going oh. to. Okay. Is that okay? The week after the twenty seventh. No, no, no. Next week, no, which is the coming. this coming next, this coming week. I yeah, think it's the nineteenth. Because no one is here to run the technology. I'm the sorry. The nineteenth is a Friday. Oh, sorry. Yeah. And the twentieth. Oh, okay. 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 So we're we're changing it's still it a Saturday. Twenty. Twenty. Ten o'clock. Okay. okay. Instead on the twenty seventh. Okay. Ten o'clock. Because Janice has to drive down here, and she came in today. Oh. Yeah. I was a little bit. Yeah, it because is an hour and a half, right? Yes, hour and, a half. and if you like these classes, I can. Uh, next yeah. week is going to be improvisation. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. We're going to take Bacon and give you the rules of how to start playing with that so that you can arrange your own song. So I'm committing Miss Sakone also in December. I think she will try to finish the song with you guys in some Christmas songs. There will be another workshop. Would you like that? Yes. Yeah. Do you guys like the class? Yes. 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 So, okay. sorry. I think now, she's going to hit me now. <laughs> one of the first two pages of this. And uh, next, uh, my question though, 
there's a lot more in this song. If you would want to finish this song next week and start the improvisation, or what do you think? Start Finish the song. Okay, and then if we have time, start in well. Okay. Okay. So work only on the first six lines. If you can't, we can do it in two pages. Don't rush into page three and four. So for some of my students, um, I will review that with you guys, and Donna probably would review that with you yeah. guys. Mm -hmm. And with the other teachers, I think. Um, she will also review that, okay? So 10 o'clock next week, we do that. Okay. okay. And we'll fix this song, and then if we have time, we'll start improvisation, and then in December, we'll do more improvisation. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Great. Thank you. 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 Not giving the group. No, okay, okay. Sorry. All right. Sorry about that. Okay. Anybody else? Question? Okay. Online. Take care. Bye. Thank you. Bye. -bye. Thank you.